Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! We asked again for a one-to-one -one interview with Boris Johnson. The answer again was no, but his team offered instead Alex Sharma, who is an employment minister and a supporter of Boris Johnson. You're very welcome. How are you? Uh, very good, eh? Now, we're asking this hour, as you've heard, um, who would be best placed to take on Boris Johnson in the final two. At this stage, is the Johnson campaign uh, even worried about who the opponent might be? Well, look, I mean, I think, you know, this is a good result for Boris, but there is quite some way to go in this contest. Uh, and, of course, the final two will go to all the members of the, of the party. But from my perspective, I think what's pleasing, based certainly on the public declarations that you've seen for Boris Johnson, he has the widest breadth of support from all wings of the party. Uh, yeah, I was someone who uh, campaigned and voted for Remain. Uh, I'm supporting Boris Johnson. And uh, there are lots of colleagues like me and, of course, colleagues on the other side of the fence who voted and campaigned for Brexit. There's a question still over whether Boris Johnson would suspend Parliament if it came to it. Have a listen, if you would, to something Rory Stewart said today. Let's get Boris to be straight. Does he or does he not consider locking the doors of Parliament to be acceptable? That is an unconstitutional, improper, really disturbing suggestion that you try to get something through by locking the doors of Parliament. Answer us. I've been asking for a week. What is the answer? Well, the answer is I think we're starting to go down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Um, what Boris has been very clear on is that he is focused and will be focused if he's uh, elected and becomes the leader and the prime minister of the, of the country uh, on securing a better deal with the European Union. That is what his focus is going to be. Uh, and yeah, That's uh, not an answer to the question well, as to whether I, he would suspend me, Parliament. Let, let me come on to that. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't be expecting uh, uh, Boris Johnson to be using such archaic procedures. No, but that's not the same as him being clear as to what he would do, because uh, it's a fair question to ask him. Well, well uh, I, I'm telling you uh, what uh, he has said very clearly, which is that he wants to secure a better deal. And I'm also saying to you is that I would not expect Boris Johnson to be using such archaic procedures. Right, but you're not standing. He is, and he's not being clear. Well, I think what Boris has been focused on up until this point, and I think it's actually quite elected. rightly, I, I think quite rightly, Eddie, is talking to colleagues uh, and securing their support. That's mm. what's mattered. I wonder what he's saying to them to get that support. The Times says he's privately assured senior Brexiteers that he will leave open the option of suspending Parliament to force through a no deal. Well, as I said, I think what he's been doing up until now is talking to colleagues, and he's been successfully gaining support yes, from all sides of the party. Uh, and For how uh, much longer can you get away with answering serious questions, do you think? Well, he had his launch yesterday and... Uh, he answered he six qu questions well, and avoided he, he most of them. Well, he took questions from the, the media. I mean, we can't have it both ways. Uh, he, he took was, six questions was, and didn't was, answer most of them. He was... Uh, at the launch, he spoke, he set out his vision, and he took questions from the media. Uh, I think as time goes on, I mean, should he make it into the final two, uh, there will be plenty of, uh, of time and opportunity uh, oh. for further engagements with the media. So it'll only be when he gets to the final two he's going to engage? Well, he engaged yesterday. He held a news conference. He, was, he allowed six questions and didn't properly respond to most of them. Well, th that's uh, 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 an opinion uh, that uh, you're setting out. What I'm saying to you, what is fact, is that he had uh, a, a launch yesterday, a very public launch. All right. uh, he spoke about his vision. How and many forensic one-to-one -one interviews will your candidate do during this election? Well, I, I can't answer that. I mean, I think that... Well, let me ask you another question. Um, will he resign if he fails to deliver Brexit by October the 31st? Well, I think Boris has been absolutely clear. No, he hasn't. Said, no, I think he has, uh, Eddie. Well, I've, yes I've, no. I've, been, I've been in the hustings... Uh, uh, which you haven't, uh, well, other do colleagues have, uh, and, and uh, he's been very clear, is that uh, he wants to work on securing a better deal yes. with the EU. If that doesn't happen, yes. uh, then we should leave on the 31st of October. Yes. And, and I have to say to you, the, I'm someone who campaigned well, passionately... Will he resign if he doesn't achieve that, was my I, question. I, I'm someone who campaigned passionately for uh, Remain, uh, and I voted Remain, but I have to say, I've come to accept the fact, uh, and I yes, said this at the time, that. I said this at the time of the referendum, that we should respect the outcome. Now, 
Have, have you we, taken lessons expected, from Boris Johnson not well, answering you, the question? No, Eddie, I'm, I'm explaining to you... Uh, my question to you was, will he resign if he fails to deliver Brexit by October the 31st? You said he's been very clear in the hustings, and you haven't given me an answer. Well, uh, he has been very clear. Uh, he's been very clear about what he intends to do. But well, that's uh, not what I'm asking. Well, well uh, that may not be what you this are... Is, this, hold on, asking. this is his critical policy. He's saying, deal or no deal, we're out. And my question to you is, uh, given that that's been at the heart of his campaign, will he resign if he doesn't deliver? Um, what I'm going to say to you is that uh, I am confident that he will work to get a better deal with the EU and that we will therefore be able to leave on the 31st of October. We, you can't start a, a discussion and a renegotiation from a, uh, a position of weakness and, and, and basically uh, uh, you know, saying that somehow we're not going to reach an agreement. I think things have changed since the uh, Euro elections. Uh, we've seen what's happened to the Brexit party. Uh, you are uh, you know, hearing from uh, you know, various parts of the EU that they're not keen on this whole process going on and on. I suspect, uh, uh, I very much uh, suspect that the EU will engage uh, with a new Prime Minister, whoever that happens to be. How will he fund his plan to raise the higher rate of income tax from uh, 50,000 to 80,000, the threshold? Well, uh, there is uh, obviously uh, headroom uh, currently that is available. Well, but, that's one uh, off. Well, 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 so I think uh, I think it's it's right that we have an ambition as a Conservative Party, which we've always done, which no, is no. This to is a policy announcement, taxes. not an ambition. Well, I think his ambition is very clear, which is that this is what we've been but doing. It's since, this is what we've been doing since 2010 in terms of reducing. I'm, I'm, uh, forgive me for interrupting. I'm talking about one of the few policy pledges allowances. he's actually made, and it's not funded beyond a second year. Well, uh, I've said to you that the ambition is absolutely clear and he's set that out. And the ambition is that we should be looking uh, to cut taxes, to allow people to keep more of the money that they've earned. That is what we've done in terms of increasing personal allowances over the last Another uh, few Another eye-catching announcement and no actual that, detail. That is what we've been doing. And actually that is uh, a conservative philosophy, to allow people uh, to keep more of the money that they earn. I don't think there is anything uh, wrong in that and I suspect uh, you know, most conservatives would agree with it. Are you happy to have someone who's taken Class A drugs in Downing Street. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I think, uh, you know, what uh, anyone, uh, and I make this a general point about, uh, you know, anyone standing for, for high office, what they may or may not have done, you know, decades ago, I don't think should preclude them uh, from standing for high office. No matter what it was? Well, uh, I've said to you, I think I'm making a, a, a general point, and uh, uh, from my perspective, at least, uh, I don't think what someone may have done in their youth should preclude them. Uh, as Prime Minister, he would preside over a policy which jails people who take Class A drugs. Uh, well, uh, I, I can only give you the same answer again, which is that, uh, you know, uh, I don't think we should be going around precluding people uh, from you know, what they may or may not have done in their youth uh, going forward and standing for high office. Something you did say at his news conference yesterday about leading a new government and having a new mandate. Have a listen. A new government with a new mandate, a new earnestness, a new determination to get things done. He wouldn't have a mandate, would he? Well, uh, we're talking about getting things done. Uh, no, I'm talking about a mandate. Uh, well, he, he would have a mandate because uh, he would have From been... From 0.24% elect... of the population. Oh. Well, we've had, we've had in the past uh, you know, Labour Prime Ministers who have been uh, elec elected uh, without general elections. I think the key and thing... And in 2007, uh, on that subject, Eddie, if I may, Eddie, on that Eddie, subject Eddie, of Labour Prime may. Ministers being elected, Boris Johnson wrote in 2007 of Gordon Brown getting into Downing Street. The extraordinary thing is, it looks as though he will now be in 10 Downing Street without a mandate from the British people. No one elected Gordon Brown as Prime Minister. It's a coup, a stitch-up, a scandal when Labour does it, but when Boris Johnson does it, it's fulfilling his destiny. I think, Eddie, what's important in this contest is to focus on what uh, candidates uh, uh, have, have said in the past. Delivered, no, yes. what they've delivered in, in office. If you look at what Boris delivered in London... Oh, his record in London? Yes, his record in In his in 2008 London. election it, manifesto, it, Boris Johnson wrote about London underground ticket offices. Quote, I will defend local ticket offices. I will stop the planned ticket office closures. In 2013, he announced he would shut all 268 ticket offices and almost a 1,000 people lost their jobs. Well, when Boris Johnson took over, four of the six poorest boroughs in the country were in London. By the end of his two terms... Why don't you want to talk about the, the London Underground 20, ticket offices? Uh, ...were in the bottom You said judge him on his record. He said one house, thing and did the and opposite. I'm telling you his record, Eddie, if you would let me. I'm telling you his record. His record You're changing was the subject. Wanted, no, Which is what I, Boris Johnson does whenever no, he's asked a tough question. If ever he submits himself to an interview. I am talking about his record. Uh, his record on housing. What about uh, ticket offices? affordable homes 
confidence built in terms of crime. crime I will stop the ticket office closures and then uh, he shut them. So I think what's important is to look at what he has championed during his time in London, the London living wage. I mean, The London Garden these, Bridge, £43 of these, million pounds of taxpayers' of these, money Eddie, Eddie, spaffed up against Eddie, the wall. Eddie, all of these are policies which are one nation, and you have to remember that he Why got elected... Why are you spouting things like one nation when I'm trying to present you with his he, record? Well, I, I, and I'm giving you his record, uh, the record that absolutely matters, which is in terms of housing, in terms of alleviating poverty, in terms of bringing down crime. That is what matters to the vast majority of the public, not just in London, but across the country. Uh, and he governed as a One Nation Tory then. He will govern again as a One Nation Tory on a One Nation platform should he become Prime Minister of our country. Has he offered you a job? Uh, I have had no such conversations with Boris Johnson. Thank you very much for joining us. Alex Sharma, Employment Minister. Rory Stewart, who came last of the surviving candidates with 19 votes, went on Sky News this lunchtime and berated Boris Johnson for, in his view, not being clear about whether or not Boris Johnson would suspend Parliament to push through a no-deal Brexit. Let's get Boris to be straight. Does he or does he not consider locking the doors of Parliament to be acceptable? That is an unconstitutional, improper really disturbing suggestion that you try to get something through by locking the doors of Parliament. Answer us. I've been asking for a week. Boris, are you going to lock the doors of Parliament? And if so, tell people, because we want to know what kind of leader or prime minister we're voting for. But he won't be able to. I guarantee you, if he were to try, I and every other member of Parliament will sit across the road in Methodist Central Hall and we will hold our own session of Parliament and we will bring him down because you do not ever lock the doors on Parliament in this country or indeed in any other country with any respect in the world. Rory Stewart is live on LBC. Thank you for joining us. And obviously we'll get to that important matter in a second. I'm just curious as to uh, what it was like uh, when it first happened, listening to those results being read out. Well, it was amazing. I mean, for me particularly, uh, very encouraging because I'm, I'm the horse that was at the back of this race. I started as a 100 to 1 candidate and it's been really encouraging to see MPs coming behind me and to see that some of the support that I've been getting, I've, I don't, don't know whether you've been following any, but I've been spending a lot of time not really in Parliament, but out speaking to people in Wigan and Warrington and Londonderry and Enniskillen and Edinburgh. And it's been great to see that the response that I'm getting from listening to the public is translating into votes here. Uh, on that question of suspending Parliament, uh, why are you so vexed about it? Because there are two issues here. One of them is that I just would like this to be a debate, not about personalities, but about principles and policies. And i just like very, very clearly the candidates just to say the following words. I would never suspend Parliament to drive something through. And I feel that very strongly because this is a parliamentary democracy. And we depend on the trust and consent of the people who elect us as their members of Parliament. And we have to tread very carefully around those issues. Uh, well, I tried to put that... I should say that we invited Boris Johnson onto our programme again tonight, and the answer was no. But tonight we were offered from his team uh, Alex Sharma, uh, an employment minister who is a supporter of, of Boris Johnson, and I did try to put your uh, point to him in the last uh, 45 minutes or so. He's part of that conversation. What Boris has been very clear on is that he is focused, and uh, will be focused if he's uh, elected and becomes the leader and the prime minister of the, of the country, uh, on securing a better deal with the European Union. That is what his focus is going to be. Uh, and yeah, That's uh, not an answer to the question well, as to whether uh, he would suspend me, Parliament. Let, let me come on to that. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't be expecting uh, uh, Boris Johnson to be using such archaic procedures. No, but that's not the same as him being clear as to what he would do, because uh, it's a fair question to ask him. Well, well uh, I, I'm telling you uh, what uh, he has said very clearly, which is that he wants to secure a better deal. And I'm also saying to you is that I would not expect Boris Johnson to be using such archaic procedures. Right, but you're not standing. He is, and he's not being clear. Uh, what do you make of that, Rory Stewart? Well, I, I, I think this whole thing can be just cleared up very simply. All he has to say is, I would never suspend Parliament and we can drop the issue and move on to the kind of issues that we want to talk about. And I'd like to move on and mm. ask him about his programs for health and education. I'd like to know what he's going to do about the US-China trade disputes. But it would be good to just move on beyond this issue and get an answer. But since you've uh, raised it, um, the, the truth is you would be ready to collapse a Conservative government and vote against a Conservative Prime Minister and potentially cause a general election, wouldn't you? If somebody tried to suspend Parliament, we would be doing something which would be deeply damaging to our country. 
or damaging I'm the sure, Jeremy I'm, Corbyn I'm, government? I'm afraid suspending Parliament strikes at the heart of our constitution. Our parliament, we live in a parliamentary democracy, so that, that goes beyond political parties. I'd be horrified by a Jeremy Corbyn government. I, I find that his views from Venezuela to some of the comments that he makes about international politics and indeed his entire economic policy deeply, deeply disturbing. But I'm also a conservative, and one of the reasons I'm a conservative is I believe in tradition, and I believe particularly in the tradition of our parliament. It's a very precious thing that we fought hard to get. And it's been a very long time since anybody has talked about locking the doors on Parliament. Now, I'm sure, because I keep hearing from members of his campaign, that Boris would never do this. So if he would just come out and say clearly that he won't, that's lovely, and we can move on to talk. Because but a, there's but a so Jeremy many Corbyn government or Nigel Farage in power would be a price worth paying for, for maintaining the sanctity of our constitution. Of course, to maintain the sanctity of our constitution we would have to accept any number of things. But I'm very confident that Boris is just being slow to clarify. I'm sure, having worked for him in the Foreign Office, he's a very charming man, a very well-intentioned man. I'm sure that he is going to come out. Let's just hope that he comes out in the next few hours and just answers the questions so that we can move on to talk about the things we really want to talk about, which are, in essence, the fact that this country can be an extraordinary place. We want to get onto the precise details of policy, Eddie. We want to mm. give the public a chance to talk about adult social care, which is a real disgrace in this country. It's a shame that we haven't managed to work out how to fix care for the elderly. We're not doing enough to build housing for people. We need to get two million houses built. We should be taking the lead in climate and the environment. I want to see 100 million more trees in the ground. And by the way, Jonathan, so one of our callers earlier wanted me to ask things. you about education and, uh, and, and what your plans are there. So on education, Eddie, I, two important things. Firstly, I think that we need to think about the way that the world of work is going to change in the next 15 to 20 years. With robotics and artificial intelligence, almost certainly people who are currently employed may find that they have to move on to another job. We have to provide the bursaries in midlife so that people can retrain for the different opportunities of the world. So that's the first thing I do. The second thing is we've got to do much more in technical and vocational education. I was very lucky yesterday to have a long conversation with Kenneth Baker about the university technical colleges. He feels, as I do, that that could be rolled out much more powerfully across this country and training people again to keep coming back to, this, to the world of work for the future rather than the work of the past. Many Conservative Party members, and they are your, they would be your electorate if, uh, if you made it through to the final two, are obviously very interested in who could beat uh, Jeremy Corbyn and Nigel Farage, something that Boris Johnson says he very much could do. Could you beat Jeremy Corbyn and Nigel Farage at a general election? I believe so. Encouragingly, the polls now show me neck and neck with Boris if you factor for awareness, and they also seem to show that I'm outpolling with younger voters, 18 to 45, well, there's another voters poll which suggested London, Boris Johnson would get a huge Conservative majority, but you would only secure about 50 Conservative MPs. So a huge Conservative majority means doing two things. It means getting Brexit done so that people don't vote for the Brexit party, but it also means winning over younger voters, cities, Scotland, and it also means keeping the nearly 4 million Remain voters who voted for the Conservative party in 2017. There are not that many additional seats the Conservative Party can win by out Farage Farage. But there's an enormous number of seats that we can win if we begin to reappeal to the centre ground of British politics, to people's conviction that actually this isn't about the far right or the far left. We're not that kind of country. We're not a polarising country. We're a country of reason and moderation. And the votes that we can win are also the right votes to win, votes that bring people together rather than divide them. I think you're right. I think awareness of you has increased in recent days, thanks no doubt in part to your uh, campaign. And it may be that uh, people who uh, aren't sure of who you are will go to a website like They Work For You to see, well, how has this man voted? Never mind what he's promising. What's he voted on? Uh, let me take you through some of the things uh, on that website. You've almost always voted against smoking bans. So, uh, in reference to all these things, and we can go through this website, what you'll find is that almost every single candidate has voted in the same way, because almost all of them are members of the Conservative Party. Well, so you voted to exempt record. pubs and private members' clubs from the smoking ban where no food is being served. Don't you worry about second-hand smoke? Uh, Eddie, I do, and I think the well, why balance did you vote that has way? to be... I think the balance, because I believe that the balance has to be struck between reasonable protection of public health 
and people's liberty to smoke. But well, I think it makes sense to have exempt areas where people can choose to go into them. Remember, these are not these are not public places. These are private places which people could select to go into. You voted against a ban on smoking in private vehicles where there are children present. Okay, again, I believe that people uh, have a choice to decide whether or not they're going to smoke. I think children a don't. Huge, well, there's a huge role for public health education. You don't want to protect education. children whose parents smoke. I, I do want to protect children, but I also think that we have to have a balance as a government and a state between what the state tells people to do and what they can choose to do. And you're right, there are many, many things that the government can do on health to keep us safer by telling people what to do. I think I'm a conservative. I believe in limited government. I believe in individual rights. And that means having some discretion and trusting people to take responsibility and not having the government interfere in every aspect of our lives. You consistently voted against increasing welfare benefits at least in line with prices. So that one, Eddie, you'll find that every single candidate in the race voted in that way because that is conservative government policy. That's against a Labour motion and that Labour motion was attacking the central plank of our reform and it's to do with the entire public finances. So a lot of these so, so do, do, you believe given, it, do you believe it's right? You, do you believe it's right that welfare benefits should not rise in line with prices? Do you think that's fair and decent? I believe that in the economic situation that we found ourselves in after 2008, we had to make some very difficult decisions and on the public poorest finances. People should pay. We decided, and, and that was the right decision. We decided to prioritise at that stage health and education over welfare payments, and I voted with it because that's what I believe. You generally voted for reducing housing benefit for social tenants deemed to have excess bedrooms. That's right, Eddie. And every candidate in this race did as well. So it, it's interesting you've been trying to, if, 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 if to if differentiate but, but yourself Eddie, from all of these people and now you want to be with them. No, there are two, two possible questions, Eddie. If the question is, am I a conservative, you'll find that my voting record is that of a conservative and will be the same as everybody else in this race. Because I, like them, have been a minister in a government and we have collective responsibility and we vote in line with the government. But what I'm standing for now is to be Prime Minister. And what I'm standing for is to tell you what vision I would bring if I was lucky enough to be Prime Minister of this country. You voted against making legal aid available to children in a wider range of cases. Exactly, Eddie. These are all bits of government policy. So what you will do if you look down those voting records is that every Conservative MP voted one way and the opposition voted the other. These are... I understand all of that. Do you, do you stand by all of that? Do you believe all of those things you voted for? Yes, I... I'm a proud member of a Conservative okay. Party and a Conservative government. I felt that we needed to make those decisions to get our public finances in order because if we hadn't, we would have ended up with unsustainable deficits and debt. Now, we're now in a better position, which is that our deficit and debt is now in a stronger position, and that will allow us, if we can do a reasonable moderate Brexit, to invest more in education, to move more of the money and health to the front line, to get more police on the streets. And indeed, when I was the prisons minister, I was lucky enough to be there at a time when we were able to bring more prison officers back after some very significant cuts. So all this is the good thing to do. But of course, I am a conservative and one of the most controversial things we did, but it was the right thing to do, was to reduce public spending because the debt was out of control. I want to ask you finally, if I may, you said you spoke to conservative associations across the country and quote, when you ask them, do you really, and I don't want to make this too personal, but do you really feel that this is the person, talking about Boris Johnson, that you want engaging with the detail of the future of your health and education system? Is this the person you want writing the instructions to the nuclear submarines? I trust Conservative members to arrive at the correct answer. My question to you is, would you trust Boris Johnson writing the instructions to the nuclear submarines? I think, Eddie, one of the... I, I'm avoiding your question. I'm going to duck your question. But it's a question think, you're asking other people to consider. That's true. Well, and and it's, not, it's not me that's going to make that decision. It's the Conservative members that's going to make the decision. Well, clearly, you're one of them. I'm Why won't you clearly, answer the question you're posing? Well, Eddie, I'm standing, and what I mean by standing is that I believe that I am the person who is best suited to take Britain through this crisis. That you I can't say right whether you trust Boris Johnson to write the instructions to the nuclear submarines, a question you yourself have posed of others. Because you're asking me to criticise my opponent in the race, and I think it would be undignified. I'm asking you to give an opinion on a question you yourself have asked. Eddie, 
implicit in it is that I believe, and I have to say this without sounding too arrogant, that I would make a better prime minister. Do you trust him Boris. or not? That's, that's why, On that that's point why I'm that standing. you raised. So, Eddie, the, the question of whether or not uh, the Conservative members will trust Boris Johnson is up for them. Well, what about but you? I feel very strongly that people should trust me. Even uh, though you won't you answer the question you posed. Eddie, let, let, let me try this again. Uh, you, you're tempting me to continue to attack my opponent. No, I'm rest. tempting you to ask to answer a question you've asked other people to consider. Now, why on earth would you just... I don't know what you... Th I genuinely don't know what you think. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And I'm, I really just want to hear what you think. OK, well, what I think is that I am better placed to get into the details of health and education policy. I am somebody that you could trust to represent Britain on the international stage. I get that. I get that. Diplomat of my life. So what about the man? And that, I'm, and, that, and that I could be trusted more than the other candidates in this race. What should people make of your reluctance to, to answer this minister. question that you yourself have asked other people to consider? Why am I reluctant to answer it? Because what I'm should they make of your reluctance? Uh, what they should make of it, Eddie, is that I'm trying to make this a debate insofar as I can. And it's very difficult to do because I'm standing against other people, so I have to try to explain politely why I think I would be better at the job than they are. But equally, I don't wish to uh, attack my opponents and get drawn too much into uh, a divisive politics because really my whole message to the country is we need to come together. We need to unite. I want people to work together. And so, yes, we must talk about principles. Yes, we must raise those questions. But hammering on about those questions doesn't really sit with the other thing that I'm trying to do, which is to say we have so much in common. And the reason we can be such so much a better country, so much a happier country, is because I think Britain is at its very best when it compromises and comes together rather than divides. Rory Stewart, thank you.